tonight's second game, which will have the Johnson Central Lady Eagles with a record of 13 and 14, taking on the Elkhorn City Lady Cougars with a record of 28-4. And last night, Elkhorn City beat McDowell in pretty good fashion by a score of 75 to 46 to get to the semifinals game. And Johnson Central, of course, made the awesome comeback against Chevy Valley. Uh, and they beat Chevy Valley by 15 at a score of 75 to 60. And along with me tonight's going to be my buddy Chris Newsom. I guess you're going to be kind of making your debut tonight, Chris. Yeah, this is my TV debut tonight. And it's going to be a heck of a ball game. That last ball game was really something to watch. Uh, Alan Central gave Sheldon Clark a good game, but uh, Sheldon Clark came back and held on to beat him tonight. I tell you what, I, I thought uh, Alan Central might, might have held on to that, but uh, Sheldon Clark just a little too tall for him underneath, and I believe that's what was the factor in the game. Yeah, Sheldon Clark's inside game really come on at the last there. And so uh, the winner of this game will go on to play in a championship game of this 15th regional tournament tomorrow night. And of course, they'll take on the winner of the first game, Sheldon Clark. And we'll be bringing that to you tomorrow night on WPRG. Okay, we got about 620 remaining before uh, the starting lineups from our public address announcer, Gerald Newsom, and the tip-off. So we'll take a break and we'll be right back. This is WPRG TV5 Sports. Not everyone gets this excited by Gearheart TV, but it happens. It's full featured HD video, now playing on smart TVs and devices through Gearheart Broadband. Call or click now to sign up. Love TV? You'll love Gearheart TV, the new TV app that fills all your screens with lots of great channels to watch live or on the go. Click mygtv.com to sign up. And right now, we're back once again here at WPRG. And right now, you're seeing the John Johnson Central, I believe, yeah, Johnson Central fans sermon, uh, forming a large line for the girls to come at it. I want to take this time to mention a little bit of the boys' 15th regional tournament. And they'll be played over at Allen Central. Of course, they'll be coming to you on WPRG. And this is coming up this Friday night, March the 13th. And our first game will be Starting at 6.30, uh, it'll be Belfry with a 23-9 record, taking on Prestonburg with a 13-12 record. Of course, these games are going to be tape delayed. Our second game of the night is going to be Pipeville, 19-10, taking on Paintsville, 15-12. And, and Chris, what do you think about this boys' 15th regional? It's pretty close, isn't it? it is, it's going to be a real tournament, Adam. Uh, Prestonburg and Belfry, that's going to be a great game. Uh, Prestonburg, if they play real good games, got a real good chance against Belfry. But John Clark's got to play, and they're saying they're not for sure if he's going to play or not. He's got a bad ankle. He hurt in the district tournament. And it's just going to be a great tournament throughout. And also, at second game, uh, Pipeform and Pace, well, that's pretty evenly matched. That's a very evenly matched ball game. That's going to be a barn burner over on Friday night at Allen Central. And then, of course, going on to Saturday night action, we're going to have Shelby Valley with a record of 15 and 15 taking on the Sheldon Clark Cardinals. And that is also, I mean, quite a match. Uh, Jeremy Johnson and uh, Bobby Keys will be matched up against Big Max Hill. And all the players over there at Sheldon Clark, it'll be a good game. 
be a great game. Sheldon Clark's got lots of athletes. They've been playing together for a long time. And uh, I believe Sheldon Clark will have a strong showing at this regional tournament. Not to take nothing away from Shelby Valley. They got two of the better players in the region. It's going to be another good game over there. Tell you what, they got stop at Kevin Fields from uh, Sheldon Clark also. He's got a real good touch. And then the game of the night has to be the game of the night for us anyways. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the second game on Saturday night's going to be Betsy Lane with a 12 and 18 record of 58th district. Back to back champions will be taking on Elkhorn City with a record of 26 and 6. And I tell you what, with the way Betsy Lane's been playing, could be another upset, Chris. Yes, they're not playing like a 12 and 18 team. They are playing great basketball right now. They're using a lot of ball control. They're taking good shots and making the shots they're, they're shooting. They're playing great ball right now, and it will be a good game over there. I tell you what, one of the big success stories for Betsy Lane here in the last part of the season has been the play of Jason Akers. He's really turned on inside, hasn't he, Chris? Jason Akers has become a real force in there for Betsy Lane. He's come along all year. He's playing great basketball. I don't know if there's anybody right now playing as good as basketball as Jason Akers. He has really turned it on. I tell you what, Elkhorn City's Mike Fraley underneath is going to have his hands full of Akers. That's probably what his assignment's going to be. But that's going to be quite a game. And then... Uh, Sunday's going to split the boys' 15 threes on tournament. Semi-final action will be Monday, March the 16th, and then Tuesday night, March the 17th. It's going to be the championship game to decide who goes down to Louisville and Freedom Hall. Tuesday's going to decide who's going to the show, Adam. It'll be a good game, Mo. Great tournament over at Allen Central. <coughs> well, there's no doubt about that, and it's, it's probably be a packed house over there every night. And we're about ready for the starting introductions to both teams, and... We're going to take it down to the public address announcer, Gerald Newsom. Tonight's starting lineups for the game, and we're about ready for tip-off. And I tell you what, there's, it's still a packed house here tonight, Chris. Both teams got excellent support out here. Yeah, both teams are really fired up, ready to go for this tournament game here tonight, Adam. Ready to go to see you get to the championship game. Yes, of course it is. It is a one to decide who goes to the championship game to face Shelly Clark. In at center tonight to jump up is going to be number three, Samantha Cook, and... Number 15, that's uh, Bernita Wells. Bernita Wells. So they'll be jumping it up at center, and we're about ready. And the tip goes to Francisco of Elkhorn City. So they can control the tap 
And almost a quick turnover, but Sweeney saves it back over to Francisco, back to Sweeney, working things around. Johnson Central in a 2-3 zone right now. They work it inside to Samantha Cook, and she turns around and hits it. I tell you what, Chris, she can light it up. She's a four-year starter for this Elkhorn City team, and she went to the semifinals of the state championship with that team a couple years ago, and right back was Samantha, Samantha Blevins. Johnson Central come right back with a quick two, was not intimidated at all. Johnson Central wastes no time applying the full court pressure. And here comes the ball across to Francisco. Elkhorn City had no problems with it. We're working the ball around, it's Francisco. And it goes inside to Cook. She's off this time right there with the rebound and up was Glendia Little and she gets fouled. Sayer with her first foul, it's the team's first foul. At the line is Glendia Little, and her first free throw is good. She'll have one more. She takes a couple dribbles, eyes the basket, and short on the second shot. Down with the rebounds, Johnson Central. So here they come up the court, and driving but there's going to be a walk call that walk goes against number 23 Samantha Blevins Elkhorn City at this point's up 3-2 we got 6.50 remaining in the first period of play Johnson Central will find a little four court pressure and, and they get the turnover it's going to be a turnover Francisco and it goes back over to Johnson Central once again that Johnson Sisters got some pretty good full, full court pressure, Chris. Yep, they've applied it from throughout the game since the start, and it's beginning to work, it seems like. We've seen a lot of teams do that throughout this season. That should have been a charge, but it's going to be a foul on Francisco. That's Francisco's first, and it's also Elkhorn City's first team foul. Johnson Central inbounds. On the sideline, it comes in to Janet Faye Blair. And they're working the ball around. Good defense right now from Elkhorn City. Here's a shot from the free throw line. That was Janet Faye Blair. Nice looking shot, and she puts Johnson Central in the lead by one at four to three. And Samantha Cook brings her across the timeline. And there's a nice looking shot. Let's see. Amber Francisco. Amber Francisco. I didn't catch it, but I tell you what, she can light it out. She can light it nice up. Nice looking right shot from the three point land there. And here's going to be a jump ball situation. Let's see. The possession arrows goes Johnson Central's favor, so they'll retain possession of the ball and bring it in under their own basket. Looks like Elkhorn's also in a 2-3 zone, Adam. Yeah, it's pretty tough, too. That's what they played the other night against McDowell, or last night, as a matter of fact. There's going to be a turnover. Sweeney comes out there with it. And Francisco bringing it across the timeline, set things up. Sweeney is old Cheney back out to Francisco. Sweeney, she can also hit from out there. They tried to force it inside that time to Cook, but it gets knocked back out. Still, Johnson Central. And they're going to get a walk on Janet Faye Blair. And those teams look just a little bit tight right now, don't they, Adam? Just a little bit. They've been a couple of walking calls at this point, but they'll loosen up here before this first period's over with. Here's a pass over to Cheney. Her shot up, no good. Cook on the rebound, puts it up and in. And she puts the Cougars in the lead by three at seven to four. Five minutes remaining in the first period. 
Dreyer almost lost handle, but they pick it back up. And in the lane was number 15, Bernetta Wells, and she travels. Both teams are really playing tough defense in this first quarter. Yeah, both of them look like they have a good, good defense out there. Here's Sweeney, maybe in trouble. She finds Chaney over to Francisco. Chaney, she'll take an outside shot, and she nails it. And I tell you what, she don't care a bit to shoot it from outside. She's got a good-looking shot, though. Yeah. I wouldn't resist some shooting it out there either, I tell you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, now. That's going to be a turnover. Johnson Central back over to Elkhorn City. Elkhorn City's press come through with the turnover that time. Well, um, Coach Philip Wireman of the Johnson Central Lady Eagles wants to talk it over with his team. He calls a T.O. And here in the first quarter of play, Elkhorn City holds a five-point lead at 9-4. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a workers' compensation, Social Security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. Elkhorn City, they've got a couple of buckets here and push the lead up to five. And right now looking pretty good, Chris. Yeah, both teams have come out playing uh, full court defense, trying to press the other. But right now Elkhorn City's caused a couple of turnovers and have come out with a big lead by five early in the first quarter. Well, we do have 420 remaining. And Elkhorn City's working against that tough pressure defense. Almost a turnover, but that's going to be a foul on number 21. And that was Lorna Salyer. That's uh, Lorna's second foul and team second also. So she comes out of the game after picking up her uh, second foul. And that's number 35, Shannon Brown replacing her. Francisco gives over to Sweeney. Swinney can shoot from out there, I tell you. She got red hot the other night. She hasn't yet, she's yet to attempt one. And here's an outside jump shot, and that was number 20, Lindia Little. This Elkhorn City team is full of good shooters. And, yep. excuse me. Yeah, they're lighting it up right now from the outside. They're hitting the perimeter shot. No doubt about it. And there's gonna be a foul underneath on Amber Francisco. That is Amber Francisco's second foul and the team's second foul for Elkhorn. So I don't see any move from Coach Ellswick to get her out, so the ball comes in and it goes back out to Blair. She's working it around. Here's a three-point shot off the mark at time. That was Blevins. The ball goes out of bounds. He'll go back over to Johnson Central. Hey, what she fired that up. Yeah, she found the open and they put it up. The zone left her open. Here's the inbounds pass. And shot taken partially blocked that time. Levin's got the shot blocked on her. It looks okay. like she tried to force that just a little bit at him. Yeah, it looked like she might have been smothered just a little bit by two, two Elkhorn City players. Here's Francisco. She gives over to Sweeney. Sweeney. She nails it, and I told you she can hit them out there. Elkhorn is lighting it up from the perimeter right now. <laughs> I tell you what, they're playing quite a game. They pushed out to a nine-point lead. Here's Blyer driving it all the way down the court, up and in. 13-6 to six to score. We got under three minutes remaining in the first period. And here's a turnover. Bad pass that time. And, ooh, good block from Cook. She saves it inbounds. Number 35, she goes up no good. It's an excellent block by Cook that time. Oh, no doubt. Some good defense. 35, Sharon Brown attempted the shot. It was no good. And excellent defense by Sharon Brown. And that's going to be a jump ball situation. But uh, possession arrows is in Elkhorn City's favor. It looks like the Johnson Central Press is giving Elkhorn just a little bit of trouble here in the first quarter, Adam. Sure has. They've had a, about three turnovers off of it already. Here's a baseline shot. 
no good. That was Little, and the rebound, and put back up in the end by Samantha Cook, and you can't let her get on the offensive boards. She is getting started early tonight. Uh, that's going to be a quick foul, back court. Really didn't need to pick up that foul. That was uh, Samantha Cook, her first, and team's third. So Johnson Central bring it to the length of the court. Aircorn decides to set up in the 2-3 zone and not press full court this time. Yeah, they just fall back. Tell you what, they got a good 2-3 zone. It's really not giving Johnson Central much of an option on the shots right now. Well, covering just, all the shooters. Sure are, doing a good job. Number 23 decides to take a three-point shot off the mark. Gonna have a run out. Francisco, coast to coast, up and in, good. Tell you what, she put that up with force. And the score is now 17 to six. The Cougars may be starting to run away with this game. Early here, well, here at the last of the first quarter, really have a demanding lead right now. Johnson Sanchez gonna have to work the ball around and find a better shot to get back into this game. Sure was, that's gonna be a walking call. That was on number 23, Samantha Blevins. She maybe should have been called a jump ball that time. She got caught up. <laughs> Here's Cook. She gets across the timeline to Sweeney. Sweeney drives. Cheney takes it over to Cook, back up to Francisco. She's looking underneath, nothing going. And here's Sweeney in the corner. She gets it, her shot no good. Johnson Central pulls the rebound. They got a minute. Landing in the first quarter, here's a quick walk on Amy Lee Castle. He'll go back over to Elkhorn City. Johnson Central can't, can't uh, have many of those unforced turnovers being down by 11 this first quarter. Yeah, that's exactly right. The ball comes in to Francisco. Elkhorn City may be holding for the last shot of the quarter, but I don't see why they would. And they don't. <laughs> Samantha Cook just takes it up and puts it in easily. And the score is now 19-6, 47 seconds and ticking remaining in this first period. Blair holds it over on the wing. Working the ball down underneath, and that's going to be number 23, Samantha Blevins, getting fouled from behind. I'm not sure who the foul was on, though. I think it was on Samantha Cook. Yes, Samantha Cook, that's her second, team's fourth. I tell you what, they might ought to jerk it for the remaining of this 34 seconds in the first period. They sure can afford to get her third foul. No, we'll, uh, the we'll first need Samantha Cook in there. First shot's up and good. Blevins will have one more shot. Takes a dribble, eyes a basket. And short on this shot right there to rebound it. And putting the shot up was Brown, but her shot was off. Got Johnson Central still pressing Elkhorn. Still looking pretty tough. Here's a baseline shot, no good. Cook, had to rebound it, put it back in. I tell you what, she's starting to add the points up. We got 14 seconds remaining. Cook's got 10 of the 21 points for Elkhorn City. I tell you what, she's a lighting it up. Here it goes inside. And that shot of in this first period of play. That was number 32 for Johnson Central, uh, Jennifer Oaks. So at the end of this first period of play, Elkhorn City holds a demanding lead. They lead by a score of 21 to nine. We'll take a short break and be right back. This is WPRG. TV5 Sports. Appalachian Wireless has a plan to make your life simpler. Forward pay. No contract, no credit check, no problem. Plans start at just $19.99 a month and include unlimited talk and text. Add 3 gigabyte of data for only $29.99 a month. 6 gigabyte of data, $39.99. Or take it to the max with unlimited data plus. Only $89.99, which has 50 gigabytes of high-speed data. All the features without the long-term commitment. It's forward pay because we are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. Of course. Uh, holding a demanding lead right now, and 
Stack Chris just gave us. Samantha Cook's got 10 of the 21 points in IT. Johnson Central, if they have any hope of coming back, has to contain her. They have got to quit making unforced turnovers and get better shots. They're just not taking good shots right now. I tell you what, they really ain't getting no shots <laughs> whatsoever. It's 2-3 zone of Elkhorn City is eating them alive right now. Elkhorn City is playing very tough defense. Well, Johnson Central has the first possession of this second period of play. And they'll move the ball around. That's Blair out top. She gives over to Castle. Castle takes it inside. And the jump shot no good by Oaks. And Cheney with the rebound. Here's Sweeney pushing across the timeline. And over to Cheney it goes. She'll take that shot out there if you give it to her. And she might have forced that one. Really did. Here's a run out, Johnson Central. Uh, 35, Brown was open for a minute, but another, she was overthrown. Another unforced turnover for the Johnson Central Lady Eagles. <laughs> I tell you, they need to, they really need to convert on, on those types of run outs. Yep. They're still pressing Elkhorn though. They're not backing down. I tell you what, they might ought to try to play more of a half court defense right now because that's where Elkhorn C is getting their turnovers and there's a front court foul. Let's see who's that on. It's on Samantha Blevins. That's her first personal foul. And the team's third. So inbounds it is to Elkhorn City. Cheney over in the corner back out to Francisco. Francisco in the cook. She turns around and her shot's off the mark and we're going to have number 20 of Elkhorn City over the back. That's uh, Glenda Little. That's her first personal foul, and that is Elkhorn's fifth team foul. So Johnson Central might be getting into the bonus early in this second period. Here's Blair working the ball down for this Lady Eagles team. And all they can do is work against this 2-3 zone. So far, it's really not done too good for them. Elkhorn zone is really covering everything. Here's a three-point shot. No good that time from Blevins. Rebounded Cheney. And we got an official's timeout as uh, somebody's got a tie their shoe out there on the court. I believe that's Cook. And right now the score still remains 21-9. to nine. So nobody scored yet in this second period. Elkhorn City's 2-3 zone really stifled Johnson Central's offense tonight. Oh, there's no doubt. Francisco takes it over to Cook. Cook to Cheney. Uh-oh, wide open under the goal was number 20. Her shot no good. Cheney on the rebound. She puts it up in. Count the basket. She got fouled. She'll go to the line for one. That is uh, Samantha Blevins with the uh, personal foul. Her second, team's fourth. Tell you what, that was a big rebound that time from Cheney. She just went up and put it in. Excellent rebound. Seen her do that several times against McDowell last night. Her free throw shots up so she can place the three-point play. Into the game for Johnson Central will be number 30. That will be Melissa Blair. So the score is 24 to nine. We got 6.20 remaining in the first half of play. And here's a shot. No good. Offensive rebound also no good. Cheney out there with the rebound. I tell you, Johnson Central just can't get nothing to fall right now. Sweeney over to Francisco. She drives the baseline. Nothing going. Tries to throw it in to Cook. And that's going to be a jump ball situation. Possession arrows will keep it over to the Lady Cougars. Got a 15-point lead right now, the Cougars do, and they've really played a good first half to this point, Chris. Johnson Central set the score in the second quarter. All right there's a missed shot, and on the attack is Johnson Central. <laughs> and that was number 22. Castle got knocked to the floor. It looked like she got fouled, but no call. 32 on the shot, no good. And that was a rejection that time. See, that's a new player in for Elkhorn City number. No, she's been in there. Glendy a little. She's got the rejection that time. Cook 
Gives over to Sweeney. Little after Francisco, she takes a little jump shot. Good. Good looking shot for Francisco that time. Sure does. I believe just about every girl on this Elkhorn Seed team's got a nice looking jump shot. They must pack set pretty good in packs or something. Pretty good law. Little Donnie Williams bank shot. <laughs> I tell you, uh, last night they used the backboard quite a bit. They haven't yet tonight. Of course, they haven't been in the angle to shoot that bank shot. It's an effective shot to use, though. Very effective. Johnson Central still working against that tough 2 3 zone of Elkhorn City. They get inside, and that's number 20 with the basket, Amy Renee Baker. That's uh, Amy Renee Baker's first two of the ball game. I believe that's the first two points of this second period of play for Johnson Central. I believe you're right, Ed. And underneath, Glendia Little, her shot's off. And the Lady Eagles back on the attack. Blair got hacked that time, no call. Castle takes it over to Baker. And she loses the handle on the ball, and that's Cheney coming out with the rebound. And number 30 for Johnson Central picks a foul, Melissa Blair. That's Melissa's first person to foul. And Johnson Central's 15 foul. So Elkhorn City will bring it to the length of the court. The ball comes in to Francisco. She's done mostly all the ball handling tonight for the Lady Cougars, and that time the pass just a little too tall for Johnson Chaney. Central's press play, played off that time. Sure did. Blair with a long three-point shot. No good. Blair with the rebound. And shot was Jennifer Oaks. She's got quite a few shots down low tonight, but one of the few times she was able to convert was just then. Johnson Central had a hard time converting on the shots tonight. Just can't give them the foul. Chaney with the long shot. They just give her a two on that as her toe was on the line. Chaney's hitting the perimeter shot very well tonight. Sure has. And Elkhorn City sticks around that 15 point lead. 28 to 13 is the score. 330 remaining in the first half. Blair has it up top. She drives, takes 15 foot shot, and not even close. She really forced it that time, I believe. Francisco gets it up to Sweeney. Johnson, Back to Francisco. Johnson Central's pressing off a missed shot that time. You don't see that much anymore. I tell you what, they pressed about off everything tonight. Samantha Cook, shot was no good, and I tell you, she missed Glendia Little that time down low. She was wide open. Here's the drive, and oh, gosh. Oh, that right there didn't look too pleasant at all Big for either player. Big under the goal here. I, I don't know what, if they got a charge or no, they're going to get a blocking we a, foul. We got a foul on Renee Chaney. Their first personal foul on the team six. I tell you, that was number 11 that time. Janet Fay Blair for uh, Johnson Central, and she just took it to a go with force, authority. She got fouled. She'll go to the line for two. Blair's first shot's up. No good. She'll have one more free throw. Johnson Central's going to have to convert on this free throw line. There's no doubt about that, Chris. And her second shot's up. And she hits one of two. She pulls the Johnson Central Lady Eagles to within 14 points at 28 to 14. Francisco. Has the ball at the top of the key. Chaney down a little, back out to Chaney. She takes it in to Cook. She gets it in there and banks it in. Cook gets her first two of the second quarter. And is that, if I'm not mistaken, her 12th point? Yes, it's not. Here's her 12th point. It's number 22 with three point shot, our ball. That was Castle, but. They get the ball back on the offensive rebound. Ball was kicked out of bounds by 
I believe that's number three, Samantha Cook, kicking it out of bounds. He'll go back over to Johnson Central. Looks like Johnson Central needs to have just a little bit more patience on offense. Here they are. They take it out to Blair. She drives to the basket, puts up a shot. They're going to get her for travel call. I tell you, it's just like going up against a brick wall, going uh, against uh, the three Elkhorn Seed defenders down there. They're just blocking it all off, and they can't get a shot off. Really tough inside for Johnson Center right now. Elkhorn is controlling the middle. Sure is. There are three low post players on that 2-3 zone, and, you know, just form the wall. Here's a big low three-pointer by Cheney. I tell you what, if she ain't red hot from out, outside tonight. Scores 33 to 14. Elkhorn City is blowing Johnson Central out right now. There's an offensive rebound and put in, put back in by Amy Renee Baker. One of the few offensive putbacks that Johnson Central has this evening. Francisco takes over to Cook. Johnson Central still in the full court pressure. Elkhorn City once again handles it. And that's Little takes over to Sweeney. She'll take a shot. Uh, just a little short that time. Here's a run out. A run out. 35 takes it up uncontested, puts it in, and that was uh, Shannon Brown. Shannon Brown. <laughs> Cook throws it across the timeline to Cheney, and Francisco sets it up. Looks like Elkhorn solved the Johnson Central Press right now, Adam. Yeah, it looks like they got down to a science to this point. Really hasn't affected them too much. Got Elkhorn's looking for Cook. They have her down inside. Oh, she gets her own rebound. No good. Lindy Little in there. Great what a save. save. Great what a save. save. Cook off once again. She missed three shots on that. Great save by Lindy Little to keep the ball in play. Here's a shot from number 20. No good. That was Baker on the tip. Uh, the ball was tipped out of bounds. I believe he'll remain with Johnson Central. Johnson Central having a little bit of problems getting it in. It comes in to Castle. And Castle finds number 32, Jennifer Oaks, for the 15-foot jump shot, and she nails it. And the lead is cut to 13. We got seven seconds remaining in the first half. Here's a steal, Johnson Central. And that's going to be a foul. Castle picks a foul up, so she'll go to the li line, maybe, yeah. I think that's Amber Fran Francisco. That's her third personal foul right before halftime, and that's uh, Elkhorn's seventh team foul. So that'll put Johnson Central in the bonus right here, and Castle, she'll have one in the bonus attempt, and she could cut the lead to 11, and that'd be pretty good shape considering how good Elkhorn City's playing going in at halftime. That might be a tough break for Amber, picking up a third foul just before halftime, though. Could be. Castle hits the first of her bonus, and she'll be awarded one more shot. Scores 33-21. She cut the lead right here to 11, and she does that. There's two seconds remaining. Elkhorn City's going to have to get a fast shot off. Sweeney over to Cook. Cook takes the last shot. And it's no good. And at the end of the second quarter of play, we have a score of the Elkhorn City Lady Cougars, 33, and Johnson Central, 22. We'll take a short break and be back with some halftime stats. You're watching 15th Regional Girls Basketball Action on WPRG TV5. When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a workers' compensation, social security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. Love TV? You'll love Gearheart TV, the new TV app that fills all your screens with lots of great channels. To watch live or on the go, click mygtv.com to sign up. 
Appalachian Wireless offers forward pay. No contract, no credit check, no problem. Plans start in $19.99 a month and include unlimited talk and text or take it to the max with unlimited data plus for only $89.99 with 50 gigs of high-speed data because we are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. My family means everything, and I'll do whatever it takes to make sure they're safe in our home. I started with this, a whole home security system with 24-7 monitoring. We control our system from anywhere, and wherever I am, I can see my family's okay. You do anything to protect your family. Start with this, a smart home security system from Gearheart Security. Call or visit GearheartSecurity.com to learn more. Lane, where Elkhorn City is in the lead in this second uh, game of the night semi-final action. And down the floor you see the Johnson Central uh, uh, dance team, I guess you could call them, Paw Pom Squad. And I believe uh, Mr. Chris newsom has got some halftime stats to give everyone. I got some stats there, Adam. For the Johnson Central Lady Eagles, Amy Renee Baker has no personal fouls, has a total of four points. Janet Faye Blair has no personal fouls and a total of five. Samantha Blevins picked up two personal fouls with a total of three points. Amy Lou Castle has a total of two points, no personal fouls. Jennifer Oakes also has no personal fouls but a total of six points. Lorna Sayer has picked up two personal fouls but has not scored. Shannon Brown has a total of two points for a total of 22 points here in the first, first half for the Johnson Central Lady Eagles. Now for the Elkhorn City Lady Cougars, Samantha Cook with a big first half. She picked up two personal fouls but also has 12 big points. Cynthia Sweeney has no personal fouls, has two points. Glenda Little, one personal foul, total of three points. Amber Francisco has three personal fouls with a total of seven points. Renee Cheney, who has really hit the premier shot, has one personal foul and a total of 10 points for a team total of 33 points here in the first half, Adam. And Elkhorn City is really looking good. I tell you what, Chris, there's no doubt about it. They hit the shot about every time they took it the first half, really a good percentage. We got about seven minutes to go before uh, second half action starts. So uh, we'll bring it back then, and we're going to take a short break right now. And once again, you're watching semi-final action here on WPRG TV5. My family relies on the Internet every day. We both work from home at times, so our Wi-Fi just has to be there. We learn with it, laugh with it, and count on it for all kinds of things in our home. Your family depends on strong Internet and Wi-Fi. That's why Gearheart Broadband provides fast internet speeds and plume whole home Wi-Fi to meet your needs every day. To learn more about our internet and Wi-Fi choices, visit Gearheart Broadband online. Everything you love about TV and more. Live, recorded, on demand, all in HD. Plus, easily find and watch your favorite shows anywhere on any device great for the entire family and easy to use Appalachian Wireless has a plan to make your life simpler. Forward pay. No contract, no credit check, no problem. Plans start at just $19.99 a month and include unlimited talk and text. Add 3 gigabyte of data for only $29.99 a month. 6 gigabyte of data, $39.99. Or take it to the max with unlimited data plus. Only $89.99, which has 50 gigabytes of high-speed data. All the features without the long-term commitment. It's forward pay because we are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. And there you had, I believe that was uh, Johnson Central and Lady Eagles uh, girls cheerleading squad uh, performing a dance routine, I guess you could say. And I tell you what, they can boogie pretty good out there, can't you, Chris? They're looking real good out there, Big Egg. What do you think about it tonight? I tell you, it's, it's been real. No doubt about it. It's been real. We've seen some good ball games tonight, a good first half of ball. And all, all schools are fired up. They want, really want their teams to come out and have a good showing here at the regional tournament. I tell you what, Johnson Central might be down by 11 points, but really
really in pretty good shape considering how Elkhorn City played that first well, half. From what I understand, Johnson Chester come back from the deficit against Shelby Valley, so they have the potential to come back and you shouldn't count them out right now. Uh, they come back against Shelby Valley. That was uh, last night's first game. They come back, it was down by 15 points at halftime, so who knows what Johnson Central's got up for sleep. El Elkhorn's 2-3 defense has, has really put a whammy on Johnson Central's offense. They're taking bad shots, and uh, they're not really patient right now. And really, they can't get nothing to fall. Uh, really, the reason they have to take bad shots because that's about all the shots they can get off this 2-3 zone. They can't find an opening anywhere. Johnson that Central. seems to be the case the first half anyway. Johnson Central going to have to find a way to stop Samantha Cook and Renee Cheney. They are really hurting them. I tell you what, you'll see this Cynthia Sweeney before the night's over score a bunch of points. You wait and see. She'll turn on this second half. She's got a good looking shot outside. We got about 45 seconds to go before the start of this second half. We'll just keep it right here. And our good buddy, Dr. Don's on the camera. Why don't you talk to us a little bit, Don? Y'all there? Oh, I sure am, Adam. Huh? What, what do you think about tonight's basketball action? Well, of course, this game isn't ex as exciting as that first game because, you know, it's 33-22 uh, uh, here at halftime. But, boy, that first game was a close one, huh? I was, uh, you know, I was uh, thinking maybe Allen Central was going to pull it out and come out on top because they were ahead so much at halftime. They played such a fiery game, but then uh, came back a little bit cold, and uh, the Shelby Clark Cardinals just uh, too much for them there in that second half. So Shelby Clark advances on the championship tomorrow night against the winner of this game right here that we're watching now. Hey, that would have been an awful big upset if they would have beat him. Well, we're about ready for second half action. I'm not sure who's going to have the first possession. We'll see here shortly. Both teams running out onto the court. And I believe it's going to be Johnson Central with the first possession of this second half of play. Once again, the score is 33 to 22, 11 point lead for the Elkhorn City Cougars. And that's number 23, Samantha Blevins inbound. She brings it in to Sayer. Working the ball around Sayer over to Blair. Back to Blevins. Working the ball around. Trying to find that open right there. There's an open shot, Blair, and she nails it. The lead's been cut to nine, 33 to 24. Johnson Central could be on a run. Johnson Central was patient that time, found a good open jump shot and nailed it. Sure did. Here's Cook. She tries to take it down low, bad pass. Luckily, he was knocked out of bounds by a Johnson Central player, so he'll go stay with the uh, Elkhorn City Lady Cougars. Inbound, it's Francisco. She brings it in to Sweeney. Francisco sets things up. Sweeney over to Cheney. Back to Francisco. Takes it in to Samantha Cook, and her jump shot is right on the money. Looks like they're looking for Samantha Cook about every time down the floor, and they're really trying to get their inside game going. Well, I tell you what, I can't much blame them. She's a tough player inside. Played a great game up to this point. That's going to be a kick violation from Cheney. He'll stay with Johnson Central. They're inbounding on the sideline. And the inbounds pass comes to Blair. And she works the ball around. Levens to Blair. Hey, this is good working by Johnson Central. They're finally working ball around. They find the player down low, and that's number 22, Amy Lee Castle. She takes it up in the tall timber and puts it in. Johnson Central again was real patient on the offensive end and found another good shot. If they can just stop Elkhorn City from scoring, they could have something. Cheney to Francisco. Over to Sweeney. Her shot's no good. Cook right there for the rebound, but she gets fouled before the shot, I believe. I believe it's before the shot. Foul was on Lorna Sally. That's her third personal foul. Well, they say it was in the act of shooting, so 
Samantha Cook's going to have two shots. Cook's first shot's good. She's an excellent free throw shooter. She shot well last night against McDowell. Looks like she got a nice shot from that line there. Sure does. Her second one rolls off, though, so she hit one to two. And a turnover. Cheney comes up with it. And the Elkhorn City will set things up once again. Sweeney over in the corner. Cheney, she'll take that shot from out there. No good. She comes in and gets her own offensive rebound. Takes it up. No good. Lindy a little fights in there. She gets tied up, and he'll be a jump ball, and he'll stay with the Cougars. It looks like the refs are really letting them play in there now, Adam. It looks a little physical inside that on that play. Sure did. Francisco inbounds it to Cheney. Little. And Elkhorn City also works the ball around. Well, they have all, all night and found the open shots. Here's Sweeney to Cheney back out to Francisco. And they try to go inside to Cook, force force at that time, but it goes off the hands of Castle. He'll stay with the Cougars. Airborne City is really trying to push the ball into Samantha Cook right now. Well, they hold a 10-point lead right now, 36-26. Shot no good from Cook right there to put it up and in is Glendia Little. Nice offensive position and put back, Chris. That is Lorna Sayers' fourth personal foul and team second. So Sayers picked up two quick fouls here in the third quarter. So she'll take a seat on the bench. I'm not sure who come in and replace her. We'll try to get a name here in a minute. Littles converts on the three-point play. Scores now 39 to 26, 525 remaining in the third period. And bringing it up the court. That time was Blair. She takes it all the way down and she gets fouled. I think that was Glendy a little. I'm not for sure. Yeah, Glendy a little. It's her second personal foul. And that's the team's first of this half. Into the game for the Elkhorn City Lady Cougars is number 25, Miranda Cure. And she played pretty good a lot in last night's game against McDowell and, and got a few points. She has a good-looking shot also. Here's Johnson Central working it around once again. Blair gets it up the top of the key. She moves it over to Castle. Castle ran into her own player that time and loses the ball. So Elkhorn City moves it up the court once again. Find number 25 on the baseline. Cure shots, no good. It goes out of bounds. Uh, Looks like Samantha Cook was over the back that time. Oh, they get a foul? Oh, I sure didn't catch that one. That's Samantha Cook's third foul, so she might be, be getting a rest here before. Well, That's Elkhorn sure. City's second team foul. I'm sure Coach B.J. Ellswick is, is thinking about that being her third foul right now, but uh, Samantha Cook plays under control mostly, and I'm sure she'll kind of lay back a little bit. Here's number 23 on the three-point shot, and she absolutely scorches the net. That was Samantha Blevins. And good. she cuts the lead back to 10. Excuse good, me. Good-looking shot by Samantha Blevins that time. 39 to 29 is the score. Sweeney having a few problems. Gives it over to Cook. Over to Cure, back out to Francisco. She's going to take the short jump shot. Her bank shot's off the mark. Castle takes it all the way down, lays it up in the end. And it's back to single digits. Eight-point lead. Elkhorn City could be seeing a, another Johnson Central comeback. Uh-oh, turnover. And that's going to be a foul on Sweeney of Elkhorn City. Uh-oh, Johnson Central may be waking up, folks. That's Sweeney's first personal foul, and that's Elkhorn City's third of this high. And, and Coach B.J. Ellswick of the Elkhorn City Cougars is going to take a timeout and talk to his team as Johnson Central has cut to eight at 39 to 31. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with some more 
third quarter action. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. Life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a worker's compensation, social security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. Love TV? You'll love Gearheart TV, the new TV app that fills all your screens with lots of great channels. To watch live or on the go, click mygtv.com to sign up. J. Ellswick down there talking to his Elkhorn City Lady Cougars teams, and I'm sure he's telling them to get their composure back a little bit and and uh, quit making these careless little turnovers or Johnson Central's going to get right back in this game. And Johnson Central's come out in the second half with fire in her eyes. And they're playing for a championship spot in that regional game. Hey, there's no doubt about this. The semifinals of the regional, and this is an important game in anybody's book. Castle, she works it around. And the shot no good that time. Elkhorn City on the rebound. Sweeney gives it back over to Francisco, over to Cheney. And here may be another turnover, Castle. She's got a couple in this second half, and she scores, and it's a six-point lead, 39 to 33. Amy Castle's come out and scored six big points during the third quarter to lead this Johnson Central charge. I tell you what, she's come up some big steals and converted them on layups. We got three minutes remaining in the third period. We got a game on her hand, there's no doubt about it. Elkhorn City seemed to have lost her offense last few times down the court. Cheney works it around. Here's Sweeney on the wing. She'll take that shot and she can hit it. And she gets the roll. She puts the lead back up to eight. 41 to 33 is the score. Castle pushes it across the timeline. And she really has been a big spark here in the third quarter. Blair gives over in the corner. And Castle into number 15. That was Bernetta, Bernita Wills. And she gets fouled on the shot. She'll go to the line for two. I think that was Renee Cheney that got her. That's her second personal foul. That's everyone's first team foul though. Half Adam. I tell you what, this Johnson Central has finally found found their offensive game. I believe it'd be safe to say they are a second half team. I guess you could say that. First shot up by Wells, no good. Of course, we'll mention it one more time. They was behind in the game against Shelby Valley, 15 points at the halftime, and then end up winning the game by 15 points. So they scored quite a number of points. Explosive team. Second shot by Wells is in, so she splits them and the score is now 41 to 34 220 remaining in the third period Johnson Central's press gave Elkhorn a little bit of trouble here in the second half uh oh now right right here Swinney's in trouble but that's going to be a foul as number 30 that was Melissa Blair got a little too aggressive that time it's Melissa's second personal foul and the team's third <laughs> Elkhorn City away inbounded on the sideline Francisco will set her team up. Cheney back to Sweeney. Over to Francisco. They find Cheney in the corner. She can hit from out there, but this one's a little long. Out there with the rebounds, Cure. And she gets tied up. And the possession arrow points in Johnson Central's favor. I tell you what, Chris, this is a spectator sport. <laughs> it's definitely a spectator sport. And John Central moves it up a court. Three point attempt, no good that time from number 23, Blevins. And out of all that commotion, it goes out of bounds, but he'll stick with Johnson Central. I just want to ask you one thing. What do you think Jim Roberts would do in this situation? Jim Roberts would take to the hoop with authority and, and not give Elkhorn City a chance. Just like that right there, but Castle misses on it. He would definitely want to take 
He didn't want to get a one-on-one -on -one game going. What he didn't want to get going. Oh, oh, Jim, Jim Roberts going to give him a little time. He's a good buddy and coached us when we was in our grade school days. And there's a turnover by Francisco. He'll go back over to Johnson Central. And he led us to the Floyd County Championship. And we always got to brag about that a little bit, Chris. 25 and 0. Oh, 25 and 0. And he loved it. Jim Roberts, most valuable coach of the year. <laughs> And here's a shot by Castle and hit falls for it. And I tell you what, Johnson Central's on the road. They're only down by five points, 41 to 36. One minute remaining in the third period. Cooks virtually being unheard of this third period. Only two points, Chris. Three points this, this uh, third quarter. Adam. So only three points. Amy Castle's been the big story for Johnson Central with eight big points. Look here at Miranda Cure. She hits a baseline jump shot. She pushes it back out to seven. Johnson Central may be taking the last shot of this quarter. Definitely. And here's a pass and a drive. Number 23 on the shot. It's off the mark. It'll go out of bounds off the Elkhorn City player back over. Looked like Johnson Central got away with an over the back call that time, Adam. Could have very well. Could have very well got away with one. Or no. It's going over back over to the Elkhorn City Lady Cougars. And the ball inbound to Cook, and she quickly gets fouled by Castle. That's Castle's first personal foul. And uh, Johnson Central now has 14 fouls. Francisco inbounds it to Sweeney. He'll go back over to Francisco. They work against this tough pressure that Johnson Central's applying, and it really gave them problems last part of this third quarter. About nine seconds. Here's a baseline jump shot from Curry, and she nails it once again. She's hit two in a row. We got four baseline. seconds, three. They need to get a shot off. Go. Johnson Central recovers. But they don't get a shot off in time. Johnson Central has had quite a third period of play as the score is 45 to 36. They are at a nine point this, this deficit right now. Gosh, I didn't think I was gonna get that out. Uh, but I tell you what, they played quite a game. I got it down to five, so I believe we'll see a good fourth quarter and we'll bring it to you in a minute. You're watching uh, 15th Regional Girls basketball action on WPRG TV5 Sports. Did you know HBO Max is the new way to enjoy all of HBO, new Max Originals, and big Hollywood hits? All of this, anytime you want. Johnny just forgot. Just download the app, sign in, and start streaming today. Already an HBO subscriber? Just sign in through your existing TV or mobile provider, then bam, all of HBO Max at your fingertips. So what are you waiting for? And final quarter of action. Once again, Johnson Central's down by nine points at a score of 45 to 36. Elkhorn City will have first possession of this fourth and final quarter. Francisco works it over to Cheney. She takes it in to Cook. Cook's wide open. She goes up and lays it in. And that's something John Central did a good job on the third quarter, but they didn't need that right at the start of the fourth. Here's a long three-point shot off by Blair, and Elkhorn City has the rebound. They push it up to Cook. Cook to Sweeney. Sweeney finds Cure wide open under go. She goes up, lays it in. The lead is back out at 13 points. 49-36 is the score. We got a timeout from Coach Philip Wyman of the Johnson Central Lady Eagles and Chris uh, Elkhorn City. It's a new team this fourth period. Yeah, they, they look like they found their composure again, and they're being more deliberate in their offense. Uh, they're they're finding the girls wide open under the basket as Samantha Cook scored one, then Cure was wide open for the same shot. Well, Elkhorn ain't going back down. They're wanting to get that in that championship game and go to the state. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And 
And if indeed they do win this game and go on, that's going to be the, according to the rankings, the top two teams in the 15th region making it to a championship game. We're a barn burner. Hey, it'll be a great game. We'll be here tomorrow night. He'll be starting at 7.30. He'll be on video playback tomorrow night. And it'll be Sheldon Clark's already in it. And WBRG will be breaking it to you. And we also want to thank the fine sponsor, Appalachian Cellular Telephone, John Smoat, the gang down at Powell, Kentucky. We want to thank them for uh, sponsoring this 15th regional basketball tournament. And if you're happy that we got this girls regional on, uh, you ought to call down and thank the people down at Appalachian Cellular because they're the one that made this, these games possible. Johnson Central has the ball. They're working the ball around. They got a 13 point def deficit right now. Ball goes in number 15 and she gets fouled on the shot. That was Renata Wells. That was uh, Renee Cheney. Wow. It's her third personal foul, team's fifth. Wells will go to the line and she'll have two. Like Jump Central wanting to push it inside that time, Adam. Well, she she took it to the goal with force and got fouled. And her first free throw is off. Second one's also a little too hard. Francisco pulls the rebound in, wisely backs it out and sets up her Cougar team. I Me and you know free throws are key in a tough game. Oh, Chris, there's no doubt. I've seen it happen too many times. You got to hit those free throws. Too many to talk about. Too many. Elkhorn City working the ball around. Cook got away with the push that time. Her shot's off. She gets her, her own rebound, puts it up in. She really got off the push inside that time, Chris, as she posted. Yeah, I, I believe the refs missed that one. But she fought hard, got the offensive rebound and the putback. Yeah, you got to give her credit for sticking with it. Almost a turnover by Johnson Central, but he'll stick with them. Elkhorn City has mounted a 15-point lead once again at 51 to 36, 630 remaining in the game, and there's a foul as Sweeney just hacked number 11 Blair. So Blair went down hard to the floor. So I believe uh, they'll inbound on the sideline. That's Sweeney's second personal foul, team six. So one more foul by Elkhorn, and, and Johnson Central being the bonus. Here's Blair at the top of the key. They're working the ball around. Johnson says we're gonna have to get something going quick. Down low with it, Bernita Wells. She fires it up and in, and she gets fouled. She'll go to the line for one. Big play, Chris. Samantha Cook's fourth personal foul. Uh-oh. And that could spell trouble for Elkhorn City. Surely could, and Coach Ellswick's uh, talking to her right now. Wells is going to the line. She's going to try to complete this three-point play. Her shot's up a little too hard once again. And that's going to be a walk on Sweeney. He'll go back over to Johnson Central. Looks like uh, Cook's going to stand there with four personal fouls. She's going to have to be careful inside there. She better be. That's almost a foul. The inbounds pass. He'll stick, stay with uh, Johnson Central Lady Eagles. Elkhorn City still up by 13, 51 to 38 to score, 6, 13 remaining. Ball comes in the castle, she'll take a three-point shot. No good right there to get the ball and put it back in as well. And I tell you what, she's starting to turn on. She, she is keeping the Lady Eagles in striking distance during the fourth quarter with all the fourth quarter points for them. Here's Cook, she gives over to Cheney, back to Francisco. Sweeney over in the corner to cure, she thought about it. Didn't take it. And here's a shot by Cheney. It's no good. Cheney's been quiet here in the second half, Adam. Has she even scored, Chris, this second half? She has not scored this second half. Well, here's a foul on backcourt. to Miranda Curry with her first personal foul. So that's going to see a number 23. Uh, let's see who that is. Number 23, Samantha Blevins to the line. 
And the front end of her bonus is off the mark. Chaney with the rebound. Once again, you cannot miss him free throws while you're behind. Here's Sweeney, a new player into the game for Elkhorn City. I'll get her in a minute. Here's a run out. Number 30 lays it up and in. That was Melissa Blair. They get it back to single digits once again. Nine point lead is what Elkhorn City has to work with. Uh, the new player in the game is number 43, Christy Vanover for Elkhorn City. Shot no good. There she is on the rebound. And her shot's no good. Johnson Central won't go away here, Adam. They won't. We're staying right there. Here's number 11, Blair. She gives off and getting hacked on the shot with Samantha Blevins, and she'll go to the line for two shots. That's Christy Vanover with the foul, her first personal foul. So going to the line is Samantha Blevins once again. She missed just a second ago. She really needs to hit these two shots. And uh, Johnson Central will be in the bonus. Okay, so on throughout the game, Johnson Central will be in the bonus. And Blevins hits on her first free throw, cuts the lead eight. She eyes the basket for a second one. It's also right there, seven point lead. Is what Elkhorn City has, 51 to 44. 450 remaining in the game. This could be a ball game before it's over with. Vanover gives over to Cheney. They find Cure in the corner. She's hit a couple. Goes in. Cook. Shot no good. And Elkhorn cannot put Johnson Central away here in this fourth quarter, Adam. Johnson Central has come back. Here's a shot from Castle. She forced it that time. And they say it went out of bounds on the Elkhorn City player. I really didn't see where that come into play. I but think you're saying it's partially blocked, but I don't know. That could have been the only thing it was. Johnson Central inbounds the ball. Comes in the Blair, and she gets hacked, but they call walk. That was, that, was a, that was a good call by the ref. She got tripped up just a little bit. Yeah. Here's a turnover, Castle, and there she is again. She goes up, lays it in. She's done that about four or five times this, se this second half, and she's really kept Johnson Central in this game. They're only behind by five. Amy Castle. Here's another steal, Blair. Uh-oh. Blair drives it down. She's going to set things up. Amy Castle's really kept Johnson Central in at the second look half. Look here, look here underneath, Wells. Lays it up and in. It's a three-point lead, and you might see Elswick, coach of Elkhorn C, taking a timeout. 51-48 to to score. 3.45 remaining. Francisco sets things up, takes it over to Cheney. Francisco in the cook, over to Cheney. She's going to take a baseline shot. No good. Rebound, Wells. And I tell you, Wells has played a well of a ball game. This could go down to the wire. Castle over to Blair, working things around. Johnson Central's taking her time, trying to find a nice shot, high percentage shot. See if they score right here, this gym's going to explode. They're going to make sure they get the shot that they want at this point. And Elkhorn might want a timeout if they score on this possession. And. Castle gives over to Wells. She drives. She's been tough in there. Oh, just about makes a bank shot. Number 30 out offensive for the rebound, rebound. Melissa Blair. Good Big rebound. offensive rebound. Blevins takes it back out to Castle in the Wells. She'll make a move again. She's not intimidated. Her shot's no good, and there's going to be a foul underneath. Uh, let's see. I believe that's going to be on an Elkhorn City player. Let's see who that's on at her. Samantha Blevins, her third personal foul. That's on a Johnson Central Oh, so it's on a Johnson Central player. Johnson Central on the full court pressure. Samantha Cook takes it over to Sweeney. Dangerous pass that time. 
Cheney back out to Francisco, back to Cheney. They're looking for Cook inside. Cheney had the big first half, but it's not looking for Cook a shot. Cure baseline shot, too hard. Rebound down to Blevins. She pushed it down the court. She'll take the shot. Bank it in. She banks it in. Great shot by Samantha Blevins. Oh, can you believe this? What a comeback Johnson, Johnson Central Johnson. once again is mounting a comeback. They're down by one point. 51 to 50 is the score. We got two, mani two minutes remaining. Oh, here's another turnover. Johnson Central could take the lead. Melissa Blevins, or excuse me, Blair. Takes it in the Wells, back out to Castle. She thought about the three. And uh, struggle for it on the floor. It's gonna be a jump ball. Possession in Johnson Central's favor. Wait, these girls really good after it, don't they, Adam? Gosh, they're wanting it bad. They're wanting to go to that championship game. Both teams are wanting to go very bad. Johnson Central's making a great comeback. Golly, I tell you what. Coach B.J. Elson because the Lady Cougars is wanting a timeout, and I believe we're going to have to take us a quick break and hear uh, what the people down at Appalachian Cellular has got to tell everyone out there. We're going to take a break, and you're watching semi-final action here at the 15th Regional Girls Basketball Tournament. The lead is one point. Elkhorn City's in the lead. We're going to take a quick break. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. Family means everything and I'll do whatever it takes to make sure they're safe in our home. I started with this, a whole home security system with 24 seven monitoring. We control our system from anywhere and wherever I am, I can see my family's okay. You do anything to protect your family. Start with this, a smart home security system from Gearheart Security. Call or visit gearheartsecurity.com to learn more. Field house at Betsy Lane and Johnson Central has just mounted another impressive comeback as I believe at halftime they was down what by 11 points and what a comeback it's been they're only down by one point right now and they have possession of the ball tournament favor Adam it just doesn't get any better than this it don't it sure doesn't pass was deflected out bounds by Cure he'll remain Johnson Central's ball Ball comes in the castle, and Johnson Central's going to set things up. Blevins takes it over to Blair. I think Johnson Central's looking to take the lead for the first time. Sure is. Blair over to Blevins. She's looking around, and Elkhorn City's starting to looks apply like, some looks good like defense. Looks like they turned defense up a notch. Sure have. Giving Johnson Central a little bit of problems. They're being patient, find a good high percentage shot. They don't have nothing rushing about, almost a turnover. They get back out, uh-oh, here's a dog. Oh, she got fouled, no call. Maybe Look here, Wells, oh, gosh, she is on fire. She is at the right place at the right time. Central's just late for fourth. the first time. For the first time, 52 to 51, what a they got back, Adam. to play. What a oh. comeback, it's been. Oh, baby, baby, what a game. Cheney out to wing. We got 45 and ticking down, seconds remaining. Cheney. Air Force looking for Cook inside. I believe that's who they'll go to. Cheney's going to take the outside shot, though, and she, she nails it. it. Oh, what a pressure she, what pressure she had on that first, shot, first but she nails it. The half. That was oh, that's going to be a great finish. 25 seconds remaining, Johnson Central. It's behind by one, 53 to 52 is the score. I would look to hurry and score right now. Don't wait for that last shot. Work it down. Come on. 12, Johnson 11, Central they're going to have to do something. something. Going. They're going to have gonna to do something. What are they doing? What they, they do? The ball. That's a jump ball. It goes in Elkhorn C's possession, I believe. No, Johnson Central. I could have sworn, no, it's Elkhorn City, it has to be. Elkhorn City's possession. I, I don't understand why Johnson Sanford didn't go for the score. Let's just keep it here and talk about this a little bit. If I, I mean, they should have at least started at, with 15 seconds anyway, at least they could have got a second shot if they would have missed it. You gotta give a team time to score, and if, and if we miss, 
it does come about a time to get an offensive rebound to put back. Well, I tell you what, and then they ended up, they tried to force it inside, and it ends up a jump ball, and I do believe the possession arrows is in it. They, of course, see his favor, so all they can hope for right here is a, maybe a quick steal, and if they don't get the steal, they're going to have to foul. Johnson Sancho really looked confused that time, not to take nothing away from Airport's defense, though. They play good defense, but Johnson Central has played, has made too good of a comeback to have come down the court and, and done this. And we got the Tommy Hawks in here. Uh, <laughs> Johnson Central's Tommy Hawk, and that's in uh, uh, Johnson Central's favor, and Elkhorn City is in, that's in their favor, and I believe Elkhorn City won, won that. Uh, Tommy Hawkins match. Yeah. I think Elkhorn's going to get the ball, but don't count Johnson Central yet. Don't count them out yet, Adam. I tell you what, Don, this is probably the best game we've seen so far in this girls' 15th regional. I, I wouldn't have thought it with that halftime score. You know, uh, Johnson Central down by that many points at halftime. Coming back here and. Uh, Wow, 53 to 52, less than a minute to go. Who would have thought this game would have turned out to be as exciting as it has been? But like you said, this is this is tournament fever, and, and you know, they're, they're wanting to go on to that state tournament. I would have never thought it, Don. I tell you what, we're going to have to call these Johnson Central girls the comeback kids because the two nights in a row they come back from huge deficits at halftime, and they've just played their hearts out. you got to give them all the credit in the world. They sure have. They're wanting to fly high like Golden Eagles. Hey, there's no doubt. When you're fighting for a championship, though, anything can happen. That's what tournaments are all about. But you got to remember that Elkhorn City Cougar team. You know, they've been down to the state several years, and they got a lot of experience on that team. Yes, and I believe that right, the experience is what helped them out on that play. Well, Elkhorn City's inboundsing it. They get in the cook, good free throw shooter, and she gets fouled quickly, but three seconds tick off the clock. To be precise, 2.9 seconds is remaining. Samantha Cook will go to the line. She'll have a bonus attempt. Looks like Janet Renee Byer picked up her first personal foul. That's what they had to do is foul quick. Or no, uh, Elkhorn City isn't in the bonus yet. How many? No, that's just their sixth team foul. John they need team. to get it as soon as it comes in right here. First, they need to deny, deny the inbound pass, though. Try to get a five-second call. Yeah. Need to foul. Uh, time's going to run out before they get the foul. Sure did. Time's run out. Time's run out. Johnson Central Lady Eagles tonight, Adam. Well, I tell you what, Chris, it was a heck of a game. Johnson Central mounted an awesome comeback. They come by from uh, 11 point desperate at halftime to even take the lead a little bit in this fourth quarter play, but they come up on the short end of the stick. They lose by one point. Our score was 53 to 52, so it looks like the Elkhorn City Lady Cougars will advance to the championship game tomorrow night, and they will face the Sheldon Clark Lady Cardinals, and that will be quite a matchup. We're going to take a short break and be back with some post-game stats and hopefully a couple of interviews. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. Appalachian Wireless has a plan to make your life simpler. Forward pay. No contract, no credit check, no problem. Plans start at just $19.99 a month and include unlimited talk and text. Add 3 gigabyte of data for only $29.99 a month. 6 gigabyte of data, $39.99. Or take it to the max with unlimited data plus. Only $89.99, which has 50 gigabytes of high-speed data. All the features without the long-term commitment. It's forward pay because we are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. Did you know HBO Max is the new way to enjoy all of HBO, new Max originals, and big Hollywood hits? All of this, anytime you want. It's only just begun. Just download the app, sign in, and start streaming today. Already an HBO subscriber? Just sign in through your existing TV or mobile provider, then bam, all of HBO Max at your fingertips. So what are you waiting for? When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a workers' compensation, Social Security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. 
Okay, we're back once again here at the DW Hired Field House, and once again our final score was uh, Elkhorn C defeating Johnson Central by a score of 53 to 52. And Chris, I believe you got some post-game stats for us. Yeah, it's a great game, Adam. But Elkhorn come out with it. But uh, Johnson Central Lady Eagles really got to come back. Amy Renee Baker for the Johnson Central Lady Eagles had uh, four points. Uh, Janet Faye Bayer had a total of nine points. Samantha Blevins had a total of 10. Uh, Amy Lee Castle with a big second half had a total of 12 points. Uh, Jennifer Oaks had a total of six points. Bernita Wells had a total of eight. Melissa Blair had a total of two points. And Shannon Brown had a total of two points for a total of 52 points for the Johnson Central Lady Eagles. And for the victorious Elkhorn City Lady Cougars, Samantha Cook with the big game, 19 big points for Samantha Cook. Uh, Cynthia Sweeney had a total of four. Glendia Little had a total of six points. Amber Francisco had a total of seven points. Renee Cheney, who had a big first half, had a total of 12. And Miranda Cure had a total of six points for a total of 53 points. And Elkhorn City Lady Cougars are moved on to the championship game in this girls' 15th regional tournament. I tell you what, Chris, that was a great job. Folks, this is this guy's debut here on WPRG, and you got to admit he's done a fine job helping me out here tonight, and hopefully we can get you on here a little bit more. I hope you have pretty fun at doing it. This is my television debut, Adam, and I'm ready to go again. You're ready to go again I'm anytime. Ready. Well, okay. Um, we're going to try to be back in a minute and get victorious coach B.J. Ellswick of the Lady Cougars, so we'll take another short break and try to be back with him. Again, this has been 15th Regional Girls Basketball Action here on WPRG TV5. Love TV? You'll love Gearheart TV, the new TV app that fills all your screens with lots of great channels to watch live or on the go. Click MyGTV.com to sign up. Victorious Elkhorn City Lady Cougars and Johnson Central Lady Eagles. Down here we got a post-game interview with Coach Ellswick from Elkhorn City with Adam Gerhardt, and here we go, Adam. Okay, thank you, Chris. I'm down here with uh, Victorious Coach B.J. Ellswick, and, and Coach, first of all, I want to congratulate you on tonight's win, and, and what did you think when Johnson Central started on their comeback again in the second half? Well, I'll tell you, they did a heck of a job. They just took us out of our game plan. They kept pressing, pressing, pressing. We kept... We, we now threw it like it wasn't even out there the first half. And then all of a sudden, we just started making the bonehead mistakes that you make under pressure. And we, first thing you know, we've got a dog fight. Well, what, what, what do you think seemed to be your, your main problem our second half? Of course, uh, I believe uh, Samantha Cook, she only got three points uh, the third quarter. And Cheney, she was hot the first half, but she didn't score much the second half. Well, I think what happened to us was on the press. Instead of coming and meeting the pace, we started drifting away from it, and that gave them room to shoot the gap on us. And they cut through and got several passes on us. Uh, we probably got a little bit conservative with the lead, and, and I told them to ram it inside, just ram it inside. We probably passed up some shots on the perimeter we should have took. We took some shots out deep in the corner and out on the wings that we shouldn't have took in the situations that we were in. We threw them a lot of passes that, that we did not need to do. We threw the, them a couple passes just throwing the ball back out to the point guard to set things up. We should never do that. Well, let's see what I have. I believe Samantha Cook, she led the team with 19 points. Renee Cheney had 12. Uh, another girl that can shoot the ball good, Cynth Cynthia Sweeney, uh, she didn't get many points tonight, but she's a pretty good player. Well, she's a nice defensive player. We like to have her out on the point, swarming the ball and aggravating it. We were a little bit concerned when Francisco picked those three fouls up and Cook got her third foul. We, those are just two kids we can't do without, and uh, we were a little bit concerned. A uh, couple other fouls were not in relation to the game basketball. They were just nonsense stuff. But we, you know, in these kind of games, you can't have those. If it's a regular season game and it's not that important, you can do that. But when it's right down to the nitty gritty and it's something you got to have, you can't do those things in these kind of situations and expect to go on. Well, Coach, as you well know, this is going to put you on into the 15th Regional Championship game. You're going to face Sheldon Clark and uh, they're ranked number one seed in this region, but I believe you're just going to have to throw the rankings out because this is going to be a tough game. And What's your game plan against this Sheldon Clark team? Well, I haven't made it yet. Uh, we were just worried about Johnson Central. 
I'll go home tonight and we'll do some planning, coaches and I, we'll get together and decide what we think it's going to take. Uh, I think both of us is lucky to be there tomorrow night, just to be honest with you. Uh, I think uh, it could easily have been Allen Central and Johnson Central in the finals tomorrow night. I think Sheldon Clark and Elkhorn City both ducked a bullet, and uh, I think we're both uh, trying to get our breath and say, sure, we're lucky tonight. I tell you what, I thought Johnson Central there for a minute might have been trying to pull the stud to pull against Shelby Valley, but your team kept its composure and, and finished out a good game. And once again, I want to congratulate you, and good luck in tomorrow's championship game, Coach. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. I thought my kids showed a lot of spunk when we went down there late with a, less than a minute left and came back down and hit a big bucket. Uh, that's what you got to do in those kind of situations, and I take that's my hat true. off to my true. kids for coming back and doing that, especially after blowing a big 15-point lead. Uh, they definitely kept her composure and played a good game, and once again, I want to congratulate you. Thanks. We'll be here. All right. See you later. Coach B.J. Ellswick of the victorious Elkhorn City Lady Cougars, and once again, they won in tonight's game over Johnson Central by a score of 53-52. to 52. Uh, For uh, Chris Newsom, Dr. Don on the camera, this is Adam Gearhart, and I hope you've enjoyed this Appalachian Cellular presentation. We'll see you tomorrow night with the 15th Regional Championship game.